That did it. Now, I've had it. I've had it with you and this whole dumb evening and all your complaining. You don't have to eat that stuff. You don't have to do nothing, because I'm leaving. There's nothing that satisfies you. Waiter, get another check, please. Here. Take this $5 and go buy your own dinner and celebrate your birthday the way you want to. But this is it with me and you for the night. Yeah. And now I know where my daughter get her qualities from. She get a good look from me and she get a bad temper from you. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Did you really believe Alice was your daughter? Did you really believe that? That's what you told me, witch. <laughs> That's what I told you, because that's something else in my mind at the time. Alice is Gerald's daughter, and she looks more like him dead than she ever would look like you alive. <laughs> Well, I hope you're satisfied. She left. She did? Why did she leave? What did you do to her? <laughs> what did I do to her? Pop, this whole thing is your fault. Now, you know that. Who, me? <laughs> what did I do? You know what you did. Every time I bring some chick home, you find some way of lossing it up. Now, you know that's not true. When you bring a girl home, I go upstairs, or either I go in the kitchen and shut the door. Yeah, with your eyeball pressed up against the keyhole. <laughs> Kidding? I wouldn't waste my time watching an amateur like you. <laughs> I can see most sex on 6 o'clock news. <laughs> yeah, well, if I am an amateur, it's because I never get no practice. You're always in the way, huh? Are you kidding? I lost another one tonight, thanks to you. I don't blame me because you can't make it with the girls. Maybe they don't like it. Yeah, they dig me all right, but I'll never get no place hanging around here. Darlene was right. I got to get a place of my own. What are you talking about? It's the only way, Pop. I don't have any privacy here. And it's ridiculous anyway, a 30-year-old man still living at home. I got to get a place of my own. But you can't leave. We got a business. What about the business? We still got the business. Yeah, but I'd be here alone. Oh, Fred, the lonesome coordinator. <laughs> I'll see you every morning when I come to work. What are you talking about? Well, what about the night? What if I have a heart attack and have to call the doctor? You know I can't dial the phone on account of my arthritis. <laughs> Would you cut that out, Pop? Now, you're not going to have no heart attack. You'll be nice and cozy here with your newspapers and your TV. And anyway, my mind is made up. This is something that I got to do, so I'm going. OK. Okay, I ain't gonna try and stop you. Good. You wanna go? Go. I'm going. And I know you got your mind made up. That's right. But, but listen, son. How would it be if I went with you? <laughs> then what's the point in me leaving? Pop, don't you understand that it's you I'm trying to get away from? Oh. I see what you mean. Well, good night. Good night. Uh, are you staying here tonight? Yeah, I'll stay here tonight. I'll look for a place tomorrow. That's good, because in case I have a tack, you know, you'll be here so you can dial the phone for me, because I can't dial on the kind of my... Your arthritis, I know. Yeah. Your arthritis. I just came over here to ask you if you want me to cook dinner for you and your friends. But now, I wouldn't do nothing for you or any of your old sinful friends. <laughs> Lamont, you always welcome to my house. But you, Fred Sample, you old fish-eyed fool. <laughs> Don't you ever set foot in my house again, huh, Glory? You old heathen. <laughs> mind telling me what that was all about? What that ridiculous spectacle was all about? Listen, Don, I want to tell you something. And I want to tell I... you something. I think your behavior this evening was childish and inexcusable. Now, the very idea of fighting a man like Mr. Wilcox. Well, you need mask to see you what we fighting about. All you said was you ashamed of me. Lamont told me. I didn't have to know what you were fighting about. 
I only know that Mr. Wilcox is a very sick man. Now, I know he doesn't look, he doesn't even know it, but he's had a series of operations and he's not well. He's my patient and he's my responsibility. Anne Lamont, this entire thing might not have happened if not for you. You encouraged it. Well, if neither one of you can tell the difference between a patient and a fiance, well, there's just nothing more that I have to say except good night. And goodbye. <laughs> Hey, Pop, she ain't even let you... Hey, Pop, Pop, she ain't even give you a chance to say nothing. Wasn't there something you wanted to say? Yeah. Put him up. What? Put him up. Put him up. Come on. You better put that set down. You give me $50, you can take this set. Well, I ain't giving you nothing, you stubborn, bullheaded old buzzard. Who you calling old? I'll knock you out. That's right. Come on, no man. What's the matter with you? Great, he's a friend of yours. He ain't no friend of mine no more. Well, you ain't no friend of mine no more, neither. Look, Grady, look, let's just, just, just go on home and I'll handle this, okay? Well, you don't have to handle it. I'll handle it. I'll get the law on him. That's what I'll do. Yeah, you come yeah. back here, I'll oh. knock that snuff out your lip. Oh. Fred Sanford, I'm glad my sister isn't here to see this and see the awful stain you put on our family. Listen, <laughs> Esther. I didn't put no stain on your family. Your family was stained when I met y'all. Don't you talk about my family. I talk about your family. Every time a baby was born, they had that ugly stain on them. That's right. That ugly stain. Even Ajax couldn't do nothing with a stain like that. How dare you say something like that about my family? Why, you bean-eating bear hugger. Well, you keep calling me no Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome aboard our Flight 195 to St. Louis. At this time, we ask you to make sure that your seatbelts are securely fastened and that you extinguish all cigarettes and observe the no-smoking signs. Thank you. Hey, listen. Hey, will you put that cigarette out? Can't you read the sign? <laughs> Excuse me. Can't you read the sign? Sit down and relax there, Moose. <laughs> Don't you just sit down here and mind your own business? This is my business. You think I want to be blown up in this plane just because that idiot over there see, can't read the sign? <laughs> uh, you are right, Moose. <laughs> Where'd you come from? Where you think I come from? Under a rock. <laughs> you can't talk yourself out of this one, you two-time and beady head weasel eyed <laughs> We caught you red-handed. Hey, Lamont, what's you screaming about? Well, Pop, we couldn't help overhearing your telephone conversation. Uh, just now? Mm-hmm. All right, Fred, out with it. Who is she? Gazoote. <laughs> Please, Esther, let's give Fred a chance to explain. Right on. This could make my whole day. <laughs> Rollo, why don't you go catch a bus in your teeth? <laughs> well, Fred, who were you talking with on the phone? I can't remember. Then I guess I have to refresh your memory. You was telling somebody I can't do without you. I need you. Oh, now I remember. It was the auto club. See, I was telling them that, that I couldn't start the truck. No, you got to do better than that, Pop. I just drove the truck half hour ago. It's fine. Now, but what happens when, when it uh, conks out on the freeway? And this way, we'd be first in line for a tow truck. Lord, have mercy. Is there no hope at all? Not for your face. <laughs> Fred, I really am trying to understand. Donna, I'm telling you, it's not what you think it is. 
Oh, no! Then explain this love poem in your handwriting. Oh, that's easy to explain. See, I was just uh, uh, testing out a new pen. Ha! Ah, that's how you test a new pen? By writing gushy poetry? It was a fountain pen. Oh. <laughs> Say, Bubba, what about them jazzy threads you got? And all this talk about Bubba being the best man. I'll explain that. Well? How about tomorrow? Fred, if there's another woman, just tell me. I understand. You know I'd never do anything to hurt you. That's hard for me to believe. Me too. Well, if you don't believe it, it's too bad. Wait a second. Wait a minute. Where are you going now? Well, looking at Esther's face reminds me I got to go empty the garbage. <laughs> Fred, now you're speaking about the woman I love. I am? Yes. I love this woman with all my heart and all my mind and all my soul. Good. Well, you'll be all right as long as you don't use your eyes. Oh. <laughs> Watch it, sucker. You're getting on my nerve. It would take Muhammad Ali, Rosie Greer, with an assist from King Kong to get me on any part of you. <laughs> that did it. That's right. Oh. Oh. Hey. Ow. Ow. This is it. What drum? I got the two big ones. One in my head and one in my heart. Oh, Elizabeth, I'm coming, honey. Have a heart and a head man ready. 